Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Ben. And we are Autosave. Welcome to our channel. Today, we are watching Season 1, Episode 9 of Jujutsu Kaisen. Yes, we are. Anna, what happened last episode? So, last episode, um, the other principal of the other Jujutsu Sorcerer School came to visit um, our favorite Cursed Corpse user, Principal, and... He brought along a few of his students, which surprised me. I didn't think there would be any altercations or interaction with the students from the other school until the exchange event. But he brought along Toto and Mai, and or they just followed him. Well, Toto um, had business Toto in the had area. Toto had business in the area. His, his business is that he loves a certain type of woman. And that brings me to my next topic. He asked um, Fushiguro what his type of ideal uh, woman was. And unfortunately, though Fushiguro lit up the hearts of women everywhere, he did not say the correct answer for Toto. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, he said that as long as she has unshakable character, I won't ask for more. What a shitty <gasps> answer. Swoon! Amazing! Wrong answer. Next. Um, <laughs> Maki is uh, the sister of Mai, and they do not seem to be on good terms. We learned a little bit later in the episode uh, that Maki has no cursed energy. Her family doesn't have very high hopes for her in the Jujutsu Sorcerer world, but she is trying to basically to show them all she's trying to be amazing and she's using tools cursed tools weapons like, right? weapons her glasses also allow her to see curses yeah um and then the ending there was a fight obviously i was like shocked by it i was like why is this happening outside of a school sanctioned exchange event uh i was really nervous until the upperclassmen showed up thank goodness for that um, Mahito, which is the guy with the white hair and all the stitches, he was confronted in an alleyway by a guy that looks exactly like the guy that's next to Itadori at the end of the opening, and he basically, like, done freaking crazy things to these three dudes in a movie theater, and he was being confronted about it, and then we whooped. Uh, back to, I guess, the current present, where Itadori was outside of the movie theater with, um, a guy that I don't know yet, but I, I think he's a heartthrob. I think what did you call him a second ago before we started Oh, recording? I wrote DILF in my notes, uh, because according to the internet, um, I don't know anything about him, I just know that people have body pillows of him. So, <laughs> and he's an older gentleman. So, Dilf, it says Yuji and Dilf. That is what my notes say. Um, so, I can't wait to get to know a little bit more about him. Uh, yeah. Let's get into it. <laughs> Are we going to start right out at the movie theater? In the rain? Yuji and Dilf? No. Oh. Sounds like summer or spring. Those, like, cicada sounds. <laughs> できるから走ると倍倍嫌いな人間が死ぬボタンがあっても多分押せないおお耳数僕のこと嫌いな人間が死ぬボタンなら迷わせ押すすみません耳数人間3大人1枚で seems like a rather timid um character Piece of shit. <laughs> Tell her what? Those are the same guys, right? That's him. Did he go there to do this or was he actually trying to see a movie and they were interrupting it? Creating humans. It's an odd movie um, to be seeing when that happened. 
<laughs> they look like aliens. So he has to have some bravery, right, to go confront him? Jesus. No. Can a curse make someone a curse? If he's that strong, like this guy obviously is super strong because he's like more humanoid, he can communicate. It's not like how demons or vampires work, right? I wish, um, what was that girl's name? Like Subasa or Subasa. whatever? I wish Nobara could kick her ass, bro. Yeah. Obviously, I feel like that guy that was watching is going to have some role to play. Maybe that's going to be the next guy that's punished if it's like a revenge situation because he just watched and let them do it. Oh, the teacher, you mean? Was that a teacher? I thought that was like another student. He looked old. He had, he had like facial hair too. Oh. Like, there he is! That's the dude! Huh. Huh. I know nothing. It's like Elemental Sight in Genshin Impact. <laughs> I like the visual of that. Obviously, this guy is a friend of Gojo for him to be trusted with Itadori right now. Maybe. Nanami Kento. <laughs> I mean, Gojo feels that way a little bit about the higher ups. <laughs><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> <laughs> I love that they used the same shot for that. They're like the two dads, and Itadori's the son. <laughs> Looks like a high Q character. It does. Stop. The one over there. Were they drawn there because of what happened? <笑>私は大人で君は子供。私には君を自分より優先する義務があります。君はいくつか視線を超えてきた。でもそれで大人になったわけじゃない。倉本の抜け毛が増えていた。お気に入りの惣菜パンがコンビニからすがっと出したり
cool visual, dude. <laughs> It's part of like the pact or the ability that he has, you know. Detergent and lunchbox. What is this visual? <laughs> is this from his training? <laughs> Those Look at his glasses, hair down. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Look at how that's drawn. It's so badass. Divergent fist. He'd be pretty scary. <laughs> that man. Are they people? Oh no. Ah.人間だよ。They may be able to get someone to be able to use cursed energy. Still, you know. Ninetail いや、そんな人々は大地を森を海を恐れてきた形を得る前に知恵をつけ今まで息を潜めていたんだ僕らしい俺の仲間さんこんな人層は何の呪いなんですか人間俺は人が人を憎み取れた裸から生まれた呪いだよ。くっそ、乗り込むか。え、まだまだある程度です。映画館にいた少年吉野純平。ただ被害者と関係があるとなれば話は別です。呪詛師悪質な呪術師のことです。An evil Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought it was weird that he was just having footprints literally leading. Yeah. In the opposite direction we knew him to go in. I'm <laughs> <laughs> What's in the box? There's like little baby curses and they're gonna test if he can see them or something? What do you think of Nanami Sensei? Oh, I like him. I like uh, his method of attack and his like thinking about precisely where Seven to attack to three them. Seven to three ratio. So it can work even against opponents that are stronger than him. One thing that I'll get into more in the discussion is that telling the opponent of about your technique and how it works confuses them and could potentially increase the damage dealt because of the pact made oh, so yeah. in a lot of okay. anime they have this like trope of explaining their moves while they're moving them and like and saying no them out loud why they're doing it and there's like it's it just kind of cool. cheesy right yeah but this there's like a reason for it i love it this is one of the most important Juju Strolls in 
the show. It's canon. <laughs> Alright, close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. Oh my god. That Back was to the discussion. not what I was expecting. <laughs> Alright, that was Jujutsu Kaisen episode 9. Yeah, it was. What'd you think? Um, this episode uh, had a lot of um, new things get introduced. Um, I'm a little like... I wish I could rewatch it, honestly. Cause there a lot was of some, information. There was a lot of information, a lot of like new kind of character introduction, a lot of new locations mm -hmm. um, that seem to be possibly important that we're going to see more in the future. Um, like the hideout where Mojito was. Uh, obviously, this this kid that was there, he... Yoshino Junpei. Yeah, I, in the opening, you see him like palling out with, you know, Itadori, like as if they're friends. But it seems like it might be like a have to be a double agent situation because it seems like I think they said briefly that a certain type of curse could possibly, if they were able to turn people into curses, they could then even maybe give people cursed energy. And I'm like, is he going to use this kid? Because obviously the kid approached him and was like, how do I do that too? So uh, I wonder if it's going to be like a double agent situation where Itadori is going to have to try to befriend this kid and kind of um, talk him out of the mayhem, I guess. Use him to get closer to Mihito. But then it could also be a double agent on the other side. He might be told by Mahito to befriend Itadori and get close to him, you know? It could be, like, go a bunch of ways. Especially if in the opening it shows them kind of, like, really close together with each other. That's the one thing about anime openings. Sometimes they'll, I know, like, I'm give like, you what... details that It gives are, me like... more questions, honestly, about... Like, if I... If he hadn't been in the opening in that way... I would just be thinking that they would have no relationship at all and that Itadori would just kind of run up to him, test if and he'd be he like has a cursed quick energy. In and be a quick character. interaction. Yeah. But that he's just gonna I would think he'd probably die at the end and or be saved or something. Yeah, but because of But his... because of that, it makes me think that he has more of a role than he um I don't know. He might have more of a role. It seemed when um, Mahito kind of pushed his hair back a little bit, there was a red mark, like, right here. But maybe he is a, it's a scar or something, maybe, and so that's why he wears his hair down. So I don't want to assume that Mahito already touched him and did something to him because he wears his hair covering that half of his face already. Just to clarify, because it was given to us in this episode, you saw a vision or a memory seemingly of what looked like a cigarette being pushed towards the camera. So he's possibly from an abusive household and or those guys that are bullying him did that. Yeah. Okay. That's, um, I think, what could be taken away. From I was session. so just wrapped up trying to understand everything that yeah. I definitely missed some things yeah. in this episode. Like the whole time that uh, Nanami, right? Yeah. Satoru? Nanami think... sensei? Nanami Kento? Oh, Kento? Um, I call him Nanami sensei. But he said not to call him sensei. Well, he's my teacher. <laughs> um, He, during his explanation of his technique and his talking to Itadori, I was so in the moment of trying to understand where these curses came from and uh, how was Itadori going to fight them, but also trying to understand how Nanami was fighting them, but also like, oh my gosh, you're confusing Itadori by talking so much when he's trying to fight. Um... I mean, Nanami Sensei was fighting while talking, so why shouldn't Itadori? I know be able it's to? a good lesson to be able to multitask. Um, Itadori showed us that Divergent Fists, I think, is what it was called. It was called that, and it was given that name seemingly by Gojo Sensei. <laughs> what? Uh, it makes sense that he would give it a name like that because I'm pretty sure he used some very similar words when he was talking about his own powers to. What was his name? The guy with the volcano on his head. Uh, Goju. I'm Jogo. Jogo! Gojo Jogo. That's what yeah, it was. Jogo. Um, 
he used similar words to divergent so it makes sense that he would choose a word like that to name a cursed energy move of each stories um I was like super into it when Nanami was talking about the percentage of power and how if Itadori was putting like a hundred percent of his cursed energy into that move, like who even? Yeah. No one wants to be there. No one wants to be on the opposite end of that punch kind of thing. What do you think of Nanami Sensei's like uh, approach, I guess, and reasoning for being a Jujutsu sorcerer now? Like he said that he wanted to, to do the job. Or career that was like more enjoyable or was the one that didn't suck the most and they yeah. both suck and i like was... that honestly it seems like maybe he's from a family uh that was in this world and that's why he went to school for it and probably might have borne some more disinterest in him but he has the kind of right lifestyle mindset in my opinion why would you want to do something that sucks so much You'd want to pick the least sucky job. I loved his lines about like being an adult isn't like your age even. Like those little inconveniences, those little things that are depressing or distressing into your life. Those little instances. And they come from time. Yeah, that build up. Those are what make yeah. you an adult. I was like, whew, yes. <laughs> I think we all um, can relate to that, especially like in the current state of the world the li the inconveniences that have been on our lives have made at least me feel more grown up than i did two years ago yeah um probably with a lot of time of being home and or focusing on what's important in life more yeah i really 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 liked this certain particular oreo flavor and I, it was like birthday cake Oreos. And okay. years ago, like when I first like was introduced to them in high school, I was like obsessed with them. I would eat them like all the time. I'd always go to the local grocery store and pick them up and I'd eat them constantly. And then they stopped stocking them. And for months and months, I couldn't find them anywhere. And then I finally found them on Amazon. But instead of like a normal Oreo pack price, it ended up being like $45 for one pack of Oreos. And I still bought it. That just I spent $45 on a pack of Oreos. That just happened to you recently too with something that was like either Cheetos or Doritos or something. Was it okay. Doritos? And it was like some obscure flavor that we have yet to find again. It's the green pack of Doritos. <laughs> it's like Vita Salsa or it's something. It's like a, it's the green pack like of Doritos that's salsa. Yeah. And we they're my favorite things in the world. And they don't sell them anywhere now. They don't sell them like in small bags or in the big bags. And that is why I'm an adult. Because <laughs> they don't, are, aren't available to me anymore. Yeah. I'm sorry. They this make is something Jujutsu good concept. and then they get rid of it. And that's what makes you an adult. Yeah. Is that you lose the little joys you have in life slowly but surely. I love the visuals of uh, Nanami's attack. Like how like he sees the mm. scales in his eyes and then like... Ch Ugh. I was wondering if his glasses do that for him. Like what is that? Because you know how um, Maki's glasses are a tool basically that have it so that she can see curses. Do his glasses help him pinpoint the correct location and or was that just a visual of what goes on in his mind good question i don't know because we're talking about magic and sorcery here so i feel like it could be that the case did you uh catch what uh they were saying at the end there that he uh is friends with curses based off of like hatred or feelings towards like water or towards like the like different areas yeah, of land. Yeah, they're born the from earth. the bigger, you know, the environmental the forest, the water, like, you know. Yeah. I and he was born from from gut like a human hatred and fear, right? Like they're born from what the fear of the water or the fear of the forest. No, I don't think it's just fear. Like I just I negative guess negative energy yeah, or like, involved in those environmental areas um i mean like big environmental areas are thought to be very like spiritual places um i have a lot going on energy wise uh so i guess that kind of makes sense so now yuji's on a mission being a little sly boy yeah he's on a mission but like it's kind of like nanami already knows where 
what did he say? He wanted him to experience it or find it himself. It's kind of like a growth test or something. I can't remember his exact um, reasoning that he said mm. to Ichiji. I they said it in the episode. I know. I you just can don't tell. Wanna... Okay. I'm trying to be careful with okay. what I say. Um, okay. I, did you like how uh, Itsudori came back in and was like, Nanami sensei, be careful. That was so cute. I was like, oh. All right. That's all I have you. Uh... Oh, did you like the Juju Stroll? Well, yeah, the Juju Stroll was... I believed you when you said this is probably the most important Juju Stroll in this whole show. I was and going... I... I bet you died when you first saw that. I was going to say it before the episode even started, but I didn't want to, like, be wrong that this was the episode mm. that the Juju Stroll was in. I bet that was killer for you when you first saw it. <laughs> I, every I feel time, bad for anyone that missed it. Every episode of this show, like, for different reasons, is why it's one of my favorite anime ever. Like, for obviously like the show and action visual cool but like the humor you know like how meta it is you know i just smash Bros. i mean like they bring up jennifer lawrence such current things and then obviously that penis joke was a very just normal schoolboy kind of joke mm -hmm. i mean i would totally do that to you <laughs> so Oh, I just could totally see Gojo being one of the people that plays, like, the penis game where you have to, like, say it. And whoever can say it the loudest without, like, being too embarrassed or mm -hmm. getting attention, he would love that game. Yeah. Itadori would be pretty good at it. I would want to see Megami try it. I don't know if he would. He'd be coaxed into it by Itadori and Gojo being like, come on, come on, and, like, dancing around him or something. <laughs> and he'd be like, penis, you know? <laughs> He like finally give into it, and then Nobara would come in and be like, "We're gonna get demonetized." <laughs> I'm <we>? just kidding, <laughs> but uh, you you good? Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.